Okay, guys, we are going to be starting the stream here in just a quick second. <clears throat> just have to um, finish setting things things up. How do you guys like my new overlays, by the way? I have uh, been using them on Twitch, but this is my first time using them on YouTube. So hopefully you guys find them pretty cool and overall like them. If you don't, that's okay. I'm not too, too worried about it. All right. <clears throat> What'd you send there, Darkwing Tate? Bunch of uh, orange cat stuff. All right. <clears throat> so real quick rundown before we get too, too far. We are going to be doing a container mod uh, progress. And we're going to be working on it live so people can see it actually happening, give input, maybe a little bit of feedback. Uh, do know that if I don't respond to your question right away, it's probably because I'm looking at code or I'm focusing on thinking about something. And do realize that while your suggestion and feedback is greatly appreciated, not everything you say or suggest will be a good idea or be useful to the situation of this. Um, if Marks is in here and Marks wants something, Marks it is Marks mod, so he does get final say. Uh, it was his idea, but if it does make it so it's very difficult or it adds a lot of pr pressure to making the mod function properly, I probably will not be implementing it even if Marx likes it. Just putting it all out there just so everyone knows the ground rules and stuff like that. But I am very happy for everyone to be here. I'm going to go ahead and, uh, you know, turn off my thing. Now, I won't be in this uh, screen for too long, but I will be, uh, you know, in here for just a little bit. Um... And uh, I am here to ruin the day. Commander Belo. Welcome in, Commander Belo. Welcome in. And uh, Will McKee just subscribed. I'm not sure if they're in the stream or if they just subscribed to my channel after watching one of my videos. But if you're here, welcome in. I appreciate it. All right. Uh, okay. So let's go ahead and turn on our thing. And we're going to uh, spot in our... I am both people. Hey, welcome in, welcome in. I don't know why YouTube tells me people's different names. It was on my non daisy account at first. Ah, that makes sense. All right. So here we go. Got ourselves a container core kit. And we're, we're gonna just place this down. Hello, Zizen. So, I am... Uh, yes, I know, I'm silly. I wear this outfit when I work on mods because I think it's fun and it's kind of a, a silly thing. I am on debug mode, though, by the way, folks. So, I'm going to be doing things a little bit differently. Um, and you might see some flashing and stuff like that. Uh, if you have any problems with... Um, well, if you have any problems with uh, flash photography or stuff like that, uh, it might be hard on your eyes. Well, let's go ahead and turn off this goddamn rain. All right, so here's the view geometry of our thing. Um, let's go ahead and uh, you can see here's our... We're going to go back to first person. There's our memory. Our memory is quite large, uh, but that was what it's supposed to be. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back to that and we're going to go back to uh normal all right so this is a hologram it has no geometry whatsoever um and it places directly on the ground where i had stuff all right so let's go ahead and let's uh build this thing up real quick i use es i use uh, community online tools if you guys are ever interested community online tools does offer has offered for a long time the ability to base build without having to put all the materials in. But if you do use VPP, you can use like, I think a hat, um, I think a hatchet in your, no, you can just scroll wheel through all the parts and push a button to build them. Um, I will be honest, I am not a very big fan of that feature. Uh, I have a lot of issues when using it, so I just stay with COT. Uh, but VPP is a very good tool. You just gotta be willing to uh, work with the tools you like rather than, uh, you know, whatever. All right, G front door. 
conflicting part. Okay. So what is my conflicting part? Ah, there it is. Barricaded. So we want the back door. So E. Okay. So I know what's going on. There we go. Cool. All right. Then I should be able to open these. Now, I do have a slight issue that was reported to me by Marks that um, the doors, when you first build them, you can glitch through them. Uh, which is obviously a problem. Uh, what else do we have? What else did Marks report today? Um, report over time. All right, so they can be walked through. Um, they can't take any damage right now. I have not set up the damage parameters uh, for them. Uh, that that's new. There we go. That you can't climb on them. Uh, I would like to note though that while you can climb on them you can only leap out of a window you can't leap in, in through a window now i do plan on putting uh openable and closable windows here soon but uh it's just something important to note all right and then obviously this side cannot be opened at all even has the bars on it, so that's nice. Um, I did realize that the wording that's on the top here should be on the um, should be on the side, uh, on one of the sides. So that's something else visually I need to fix. All right, let's go ahead and check out uh, the geometries of this. All right. What are you? I don't remember you having you. All right, so that geometry works well. It looks like it's a watchtower. It's weird. Ah, bloody rain. Yeah, it looks like it's a watchtower. Huh. All right, I think I've been in this uh, mode for long enough. I'm going to go to the full-fledged view, guys. All right, here we go. All right, so uh, looks like my view geometry, uh, my geometries are all working properly. Um, let's go ahead and go here. So... The geometries are valid. It's just... It's not stopping me from glitching through it when I first build it. And that geometry doesn't even work. Let's go ahead and... Uh, look at this. I'm actually curious. Yeah, I think that's a problem. Um, let's go ahead and... Uh, let's go ahead and make note of this. So what we'll do is we'll... We're going to spawn in. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, so we're going to spawn in uh, him and him. All right. And then uh, FX, FMX. I usually just spawn in the FNX uh, real quick because it's just so efficient to do so. Um, uh, it's the debug tools. So, um, Daisy gave us uh, these amazing debug tools, or it greatly expanded upon them last update, and they have been amazing to have. Um, so we're going to turn back on the fire geometry. And we have our buddies in there. 
And I'm going to try to shoot through this crack. Right? So... Okay, so it looks like my buddy is taking full-fledged damage there. Um, if I go to my um, Daisy here and go to MP Missions, Profiles, here. Uh, so, I'm going to zoom in for you guys. So it looks like uh, Survivor. Uh, let's go ahead and push Enter here. So the first shot hit him for 35 damage, um, which is about full damage. Um, let's go ahead and try this again and uh, see if I can hit them through the metal. Yep. So there's a crack right there in my uh, in my in my fire geometry. So that, that's actually pretty easy to fix. So what we'll do is we'll save this, and then we're going to go to our proxies. Um, and that is the bar the barricaded door, uh, which is the back barricaded door, right? Yes. Okay, so fire geometry. Here is the crack that I was talking about. Here we go. Yeah, that's a... Uh, that's a pretty gnarly crack. <laughs> crack. Um, honestly, because technically this is one entire door, I don't need two components. Um, that was my bad, my mistake for thinking I did. So what we could do is we could push a V inside our object builder, set ourselves on the x-axis, and then just fully encompass this entire door. Right? And now... This component is all one situational thing. And honestly, uh, we're going to want to do this for the rest of these. So we're just going to copy this, control C. And we're going to come in here and we're going to delete this stuff. Because we don't need it. Because we're going to paste in the full-fledged component here. Because we don't want people peeking through this geometry. And we don't want people um, <clears throat> causing problems. Now, I do have to make sure that I always set a mass over at least 20 uh, units. Otherwise, my geometry does not work. All right. Uh, the next thing I wanted to take a look at is... Um, let's go ahead and go back here. Uh, we can turn off the uh, wire now. Go back to... Uh, Oh, let's look at our memories. Um, so if you're curious, these are all of my proxies here. Uh, which, um, obviously, um, I busted down my door. That's funny. Um, excuse me, buddy. Um, so, yeah. So we can go here, and we can go to uh, the view geometry. Or, what is it? This is memory. Memory is kind of interesting. Here's the fire geometries. You can see that one of my doors is gone. Um, now I could put unlimited ammo and stuff like that, but you can see that I have a fire geometry here, fully done. If I were to go back into my ESP mode and then deconstruct the front door and then rebuild it, uh, would my, yep, there it is. And I need to fix the fire geometry on the openable and closable doors, too. Um, let's go ahead and click repair. You can't really repair this. Nah. If you ever wanted to know what a player fire geometry looks like, that's how it, lo what it looks like. <clears throat> Alright. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, turn this back to normal. Alright. So we got that completely figured out. Um, why don't we go ahead and um, shut this down and start working on the uh, fixing the problems I have come across. Alright, 
there we go. All right, so we got that fixed. Um, so one of the things I tried to do, and I was trying to be clever with this, is I was trying to make it so if you build uh, the doors, you could see um, you'd build them both at once. However, I feel that that's what's causing the problem, is it's trying to build both of those uh, things at once. But let's go ahead and go look at the front door real quick to see what I did, if I could do anything to improve upon this. So, okay. Oh, you know what? Not, oh, no, that looks like a, that's 10. That's 20, so that's correct. Let's go ahead and uh, go over and look at the other one, uh, the right side. All right, right side. That one is 20 entirely. Let's go ahead and just do a redefine. Click apply, save. Okay, back to the core. Um, let's go ahead and, uh, yeah. <clears throat> All right. Uh, you guys like my pretty object builder background? It's so pink. Uh, it actually, it's just so much nicer on the eyes. Um, uh, Streamlabs, uh, you can stop trying to promote my puns. I don't think anybody here in Daisy cares about my puns. Um, Okay, so um, the next thing we have to look at is uh, a script. Okay, so we can go ahead and clean that out. This is uh, this is such an amazing twist to base building. I'm so glad you and Marks are doing this. Well, I'm glad that you like it, Greg. I'm glad that you like it. Uh, again, it was all Marks' idea. I'm just bringing it to life for the guy. Um, let's go ahead and go to... Oh, yeah. Uh, P drive... Um, attain your buildable, buildable scripts for world, and then we're going to look at these two scripts real quick. Nice, Greg. Nice. And like I keep telling everybody, uh, this uh, will be a hundred percent um open source. So you guys will be able to modify it how you see fit, free pack it, whatever you want to do. You can see here I'm already starting to make it compatible with code lock. Player identity. Okay, we just gotta look at the action conditions. Uh, that is awesome. I've been wa uh, wanting to see base building. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. So test twenty five does not exist, but fence does. Okay. So if fence and the fence is opened and the fence has hinges, then do this. If not, then do this. So the selection e interact equals store interact. You can ask any question you want, uh, Darkwing noob. I will. Uh, Answer them as best as I can. Any chance compatibil compatibility with expansion as well? Uh, probably. However, because this mod is going to be open source as soon as I make it public, I think other people will make it if I don't. I was previously trying to make how, um, figure out how to make Z stuff shipping container parts as well as a base building system. Oh, that's cool, Greg. That's cool. All right, so... What is it? What it's saying here is that is open, is needs to be triggered. So let's go ahead and look at our container core. Is opened equals state. All right. So if open fence, that was close fence. Okay. And open fence is opened. Okay. Construction.
Uh, I understand config's a little now, but scripts make my brain numb. Yes, they can make my brain numb too, trust me. Um, I, I, I just didn't have the skill or know-how, so this is definitely one of my fave future mods. I'm glad to hear it. I'm glad to hear it. Um, so, okay. So, return is opened. Set open state. Okay, so let's go ahead and find set open state. So, when I open this, it should be setting to true, but it's not. Let's go ahead and take a look at my building fortifications mod real quick to see where I've gone wrong with this open and close script. No, that's, I don't want the building fortifications core one. I want the door barricade. Alright, so set open true. Set open false. Okay. Return M is opened. I think that's pretty much the same thing I have here. Okay. So, down here, on here, it should be, uh, fence, open, open fence, void star client, play rattle sound, not in there. Uh, this is where, uh, I don't have that, okay. Let's go to my model config here <clears throat> for my uh, buildable containers. Oh, I opened the wrong one there. We're going to close these down. We don't need the, these right now. Um, I don't see any th any like flaws in my logic. Um, so, yeah. Contents. Boom. Boom. Okay. So, uh, let's go ahead and collapse the global health. Uh, attachments, that's animation sources. Okay. So, we're gonna, we're looking for is gate equal one, more than one of these. So, we can actually just search for that real quick. So, I just have my little search bar here, guys. And I change this to here. And then all I do is I go count. And there is only one that says that. What about, um, oh, see, I have three of these matches so that's the problem i have here is that technically i'm forcing all these to be built so these technically should all be different numbers um and that's the problem is that um i am essentially assigning assigning these to be um the same identity and that's where I'm having my issues. So let's go ahead and make these not the same identity um, and see what happens. Back to day Z and we're gonna launch our debug. Uh, I might actually turn off my, um, my desktop sounds if that guy, if that, sound bugs you guys but yeah it's just my computer going do you wish to launch this in admin mode and i'm like yes i do i've said it a million times but whatever but yeah ask any questions you guys want even if it doesn't have to do with this mod i'd be happy to try to explain the best i can any questions you guys have um kind of the purpose of my uh, YouTube channel as well is to help educate people about how to mod for DayZ. So if you guys have any questions about it, feel free. I know I haven't done any like how to retexture in DayZ or any of those kind of tutorials yet. They are coming soon. Um, I just want to get through actually how to use the tools of DayZ before I actually show you how to put stuff into the game. Uh, one of those uh, two tutorials might be on the debug tools, how to set them up and how to use them properly with DayZ so you can better mod like I'm doing right now. Um, I forgot to re I forgot to repack. See, everyone makes mistakes when they're modding. <laughs> yeah, see, this is I use add-on breaker. You can judge me all you want, but 
add-on breaker is my go-to uh, packer. If I do use Micro's tools, it's at the very end stage of my uh, mod, and I just use it to go through and polish my entire mod up. That's all I use it for, is polish. Um, there are good reasons why I don't use Micro's tools for building up a mod, um, and it mainly comes down to time and frustration management. So let's go ahead and pack this. Yeah. And you know what? I actually kind of feel like if anybody here has been told to use Micro's tools all the time, that you guys kind of deserve a little bit of an explanation on that. The reason why I use Add-on Builder is because while Micro's tools is a powerful third-party tool, it causes complications in the flow of work greatly. And what I mean by that is that in Add-on Builder, if I forget a semicolon add-on builder will tell me i forgot a semicolon um if um if i do it in micro's tools micro's tools won't even pack um the mod it will tell me the packing of the mod has failed now semicolon or forgetting semicolons isn't very detrimental to um building with a mod if i properly uh if I improperly path my RV mats, Micro's tools won't pack. If I do, there's so many reasons why Micro's tools won't pack. And most of those reasons in my view are very minor things that I would only care about when I'm actually getting to the end of my mod project. Um, yes, I have touched UI stuff, very, very little though. Um, so add-on builder, Yes, it will tell you about errors if the errors are fatal or problematic. It actually got, has gotten better in the past uh, four updates to DayZ. They've actually made some cool logging errors and stuff in it. Um, oh, my uh, thing, can, uh, thing. I should make a type entry actually for that. Um, but uh, Micro's tools can take what would um, can make something take like I think an hour or two. Uh, take like three to four to five hours where add-on builder I build it I test it I experiment with it I have fun with it and then I just keep going um, and that's why I like add-on builder more than uh, my girls tools okay let's see the questions here uh, so I started the train stuff so I understand the fun and pain you're live you're live hey sauerkraut uh, King Duken I'm curious how bad is it to build a custom building system as I'd love to make a hybrid of all base building systems. I love the base building, but there are spiral staircases are all, um, absolutely terrible. Hey, Dump Gra, you ever touch UI stuff? I think I answered that already, actually. But I like expansions, actual base building and snapping, and wish there was a craftable ladders and more optional floor holes and whatnot. I skipped, I stopped using my cool tools when he removed the ability to use from a can line a batch script when working in a team. The it's important everyone builds with the same setting. I might want a crafting bench mod, but I think I'll struggle when it comes to it. I can't believe you made me sub to talk. You weren't sub to me already? Guys, the mods are coming out. I'm done. Just trash. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, so, the UI is interesting. And I know a lot of people who are good at UI work... Uh, there's a guy called TH um, that is amazing with work, he, although he does speak Spanish. Uh, hey, you know what? If you don't want to sub to me, it's okay, buddy. It's okay. My Discord PMs are open, but you know. <sighs> Sad dump bra. Sad. Um, yeah, UI work is difficult. Um, and the reason why UI work is difficult is because you have to actually know how to do scripting alongside with it and actually how to tie your UI buttons with and stuff like that. I was able to do some basic stuff with my uh, Metallurgy Forging journal, but I haven't done much past that. I can, I can tell you how to make custom icons for your, um, your attachment slots, though. That's fun. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and uh, build this bad boy up. It probably despawned because I shot it. Um, 
So what were we trying to test here? Oh yeah, yeah, the back door. And then we were going to test the um, front door. Okay, so I built these individually. So technically this should not, yep, see, because I'm building the doors one step at a time and not all together, it's, uh, it's not flipping out. See, when I'm, uh, okay, so I think I know the problem here. When the doors are closed, it's, um, only showing the close option, not the open. All right, so, uh, did you go to school for, for scripting at all? No, I did not. I am a completely and efficiently a self-taught asshole. Uh, yeah, there is a workbench mod in the workshop already, but I didn't want to touch it because the uploader is notorious for stealing people's work, haha. Uh, that dump gra fella is a master at adding multiple proxies to models, just saying. Hey, Big Joe, or Big Diesel. Oh, man. Okay, so I fixed that problem, so I can no longer run through these doors. So that's one problem fix that Marks uh, told me. All right, now let's go ahead and see if I fixed the other problem that we came across, folks. So we're going to build uh, the bottom. With the bottom. Oh, oh, boots with the fur. With the fur. Okay, survivor. And I think we're going to shoot uh, Keleth and that guy today. Okay. Um, gun, 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 gun. Uh, you don't have any ammo. Uh, what about you? Oh, there's ammo right here. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead. Player management, survivor, on with ammo, god god mode, boop, boop, boop. Okay. Okay, so the problem we had here, folks, is in our daisy render, we had it so the fire geometry, um, you know, it only... Okay, so the fire geometry is there. Uh, so let's go ahead and change this into a Z wire. Right? Okay, and then let's go game, combat, turn these on. Okay. So we have our survivors there. Okay. Oh, they look like they're safe. Haha, <laughs> fools, you forgot to close the side! Okay. Um, all the bullets stopped here. Awesome. Uh, so you push Alt, Tab, and oh, you push Alt in Windows mode at the same time, and it brings up this menu. I always push Alt first, then with the Windows key, and then I can start bringing up stuff like this. Uh, let's go ahead and go in here, and let's turn off the... Um, yeah, no, I don't want, I want that. No, I want that. Um, easy render, no. Fusion world, yeah, show bullets. Okay. And bullets, and then we want to see the stats. If you guys are curious, this is what this does. Um, when I shoot it, it shows you trajectory. The end simulation is when the bullet is technically deleted from the world, but yet technically the bullet is still traveling. Um, on the left-hand side, up, uh, yeah, up there, you could see it. So if I shoot again, you'll see, I can tell you the speed and the distance and the time it took to get to places. Um, obviously, Wobo has a lot of these cool tools on a website for you to play with, but it is cool to see. Um, also, if I look at this guy, if you guys see... Uh, over here, there is a entire thing. It has, like, left hand, right hand, leg, right leg, right foot, torso, whatever. So, like, you can actually see in real time, if I were to shoot his uh, left hand, uh, if I hit him. So, I shot his uh, left hand. So, the left hand now is 64.25 out of 100 health. The global health for him is 96.07. So, body parts on people exist, and they all have health. Um, does that mean eventually they're going to do other cool things in the future? I don't know, but it is pretty cool.
Uh, but, like, you know, you can, like, shoot this guy in the thigh and one of his health things will go down. It tells you how much shock you, um, you've done to him. Uh, so he technically would be knocked out now. Um, poor guy. I'm just shooting him constantly. Um, but yeah. Two, three, four, five. Oh yeah, this is fun. Uh, if I get the angle just right, where is it? Or right, I think I can do it here. There we go. No, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it right. There we go. If you ever wanted to become an expert at ricocheting, you could do this. If the arm goes to zero, does it break his leg? Uh, I don't know. I would have to log my uh, my other account in uh, to the server to see. But yeah, if you guys ever wanted to, you could practice practice learning how to ricochet. <laughs> uh, okay, let's get back to work. Um, let's go ahead and uh, clean this stuff off real quick. Um, because uh, I'm pretty sure this is annoying. Wow. I, uh, I really need to tell Streamlabs to shut the fuck up. Um, okay, so if you guys ever wanted to know, this is the... Um, oh, see, the door is broken. I can't go through it. We'll fix that here in a minute. Yes, all surfaces ricochet differently. So, like, this ground... Oh, let me go ahead and turn this back on. Um, shots. Yeah, there we go. So, this ground... Uh, yeah. So, like, this tank almost ricochets all bullets. Right? Like, I can literally ricochet off right there. Uh, but, like, pretty much the same angle... Stops it right away. Um. Hey, no. Sometimes the ricochets aren't perfect. Like, this one was a double ricochet. Boom. 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 Um. We can actually repeat that if we wanted to. It'd be like, uh. So. Shooting. Here. Nope. Oh. Oh, that's, uh. That's too close. So, uh, I got close to doing a double ricochet, but you know what, you know what I mean. Um, okay. Okay, uh, so let's continue working. I know I'm getting a little bit distracted, but that's okay. So, uh, if anybody actually wants to know, base building works off of proxying and hide and show animations. If you guys don't know how the animations in Daisy works, I have a, uh, I have a... Uh, Daisy Tools tutorial on the model.cfg that actually comes with example folder files so you can actually see how hide and show animations work with the model.cfg, config cpp, and a model, and rotation, same exact thing, and then off obviously translation. Translation is going side to side, back and forth, up and down. Uh, but that's kind of what base building is. So in base building, all I have is a bunch of different selections of proxies. And then those proxies are told to hide and show based on the animation uh, inside of the model, the model.cfg, and the config cpp. Then inside of your scripts, you just have basic uh, open and close or animation or, or rotation uh, checks. Now, I say all of this is very basic. However, it took me like six months to learn how to do all of this. But when you have somebody here like me who can tell you how it works, it actually makes a lot more sense because I couldn't figure out why they used proxies um, until much, much later. Um, but yeah, just stuff like that matters, guys. Okay, so uh, 
what did I need to work on? Ah, let's go ahead and add in uh, or see why whenever the thing starts, it's technically not in a open a open state. I have a buddy who wants a Claymore skin. Do I need to edit the animation? I mean, I, I, I don't know 100%, buddy. Um, let me see here. I'm not sure if you if nobody here has ever had the uh, the Eliteness app. This app is so amazing. So I can go in here and I can go to uh, let's say weapons, and then I probably can go into explosive, uh, claymore mine. So um, let us go ahead and see here. So the Claymore Mine, uh, Darkwing Tate, has a zip tech, uh, on it. Now, what you need to do is you need to look inside of the resolution LODs and see the zip tech here. Now, the zip tech has a color attached to it, which then tells me that if I were to go to P Drive, Daisy, um, and then I go to weapons, uh, was it explosives, data, claymore code. Okay, let's open this. This is what the zip tech looks like. So all you would have to do inside of here is make a custom, uh, override to, um, so you could call this here, I believe, uh, I believe. By the way, believing and being able to do are two different things. But because it has the thing called zip tech, it should allow you to overwrite this if you put inside of your hidden selection zip tech. But yeah, I like eliteness. And it doesn't break any of BI's rules or anything like that, by the way. Okay, let's go ahead and get back to what we're supposed to be working on here. So, uh, we're going to add in, um, more, more parts, okay? Uh, because we're finally at the stage where I think we're doing okay. We could, however, instead of working on, oh, no, 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 we were going to do, uh, this. So, M gate is opened. All right, returned is opened. Go. Open fence. Okay. Okay. So what I think I need to do is Class, fence, go to my uh, scripts, search. I mean, don't, don't, uh, I have one saying when it comes to modding. Do not celebrate until you have successfully completed what you're going after. Uh, if you celebrate too early, it can become super, super, uh, a super downer, um, honestly. It can really get to you. Um, there we go. Uh, do I have that in mind? Yes. Okay, so the problem here is my scripts. Hopefully you guys don't mind the music. Fence is opened. Okay. I 
that says Hitchens, pinch is open. So. Oh, okay, I know why. Okay, so false. Boom. That should solve our problem with having the open and close in events. Um, let's go ahead and bring up um, the rest of our um, container. Don't break on me now, Blender. I've used you for years. Must have froze. I'll say I tried that and I had a Claymore bag in my hand. When I would place it, the model would change. Uh, there might be another model of the Claymore. So, explosives, weapons. Yeah, there might be a place model. Exactly what Big Joe said. So, Claymore placing... Play more, okay. Obviously, oh, so you spell right. All right, Claymore placing. It hurts off the Claymore mine. I'm not sure. Uh, we'll take a look at that soon. No, you're fine. You're fine. You're not throwing off the stream. All right. So here is our model that I made. And there is our window. Cool. So we want to export the left and right window. Okay. So, file, export. They will share the same glassing, but have like um have placing it. If it's all right. B drive. Uh, container buildable. Content. Proxies, and we're just gonna put this here for right now. Call this uh, left window. Selected objects, export. Let me check my uh, Discord real quick to make sure I don't get in trouble. Okay, and then we want to do the right window. File, export, FBX. Uh, yeah, we're just going to call this the right window. Hopefully I did this right. Kick, 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 kick. Sorry. Um, I only feel ashamed of myself on days that end in Y. Every other day, I feel very pleased with myself. Just saying. Um... You guys wanted to know this entire model with every component you can do is only 9,616 vertices. The vanilla fence is like, I think, 14 to 15,000 vertices. And this was with all the options, by the way, which technically, if I had a front door, I couldn't build a front door barricade. If I had a bottom, I couldn't build a, uh, ha a bottom with a hatch. Um... Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. 
I, I couldn't build the bottom or the hatch if I just had a regular bottom. If I had a back door, if I had a uh, barricaded back door, I couldn't have a regular back uh, back door, right? And if I had a top with a hatch, I couldn't have um, a regular top. If I had a wall, I couldn't have a wall and a window. And if I had a wall and a window on the right side, I couldn't have a G wall. So when you fully build your uh, cargo container from the ground up, there will be conflicting parts. There will be parts that you can't build if another part's already built. So this is what the vertice count for your container will look like if you built using the top with the top with a hatch, one of the sides with a window, the back is barricaded, the front is uh, that, and then the uh, bottom is not hatched at all. Now, if I wanted to make both sides openable and closable, which uh, let's go ahead and do that. So the back door, uh, the yeah. So if I did that, it would be 4,754. So when you fully build your cargo container, it will be one third or a little bit more, like a 500 vertices more. more uh, it'll be one third plus 500 vertices, give or take. Uh, that of a vanilla fence with this guy. So hopefully that makes server owners who are sitting here watching feel good. Because again, a vanilla fence has 15,000 vertices or more if you fully build up a vanilla fence. I'm talking the platform with the staircases and everything else like that. A fully functioning vanilla fence that doesn't have a gate. That is like 15,000 vertices. Um, so this should be a lot better on people's performances. Uh, that's kind of like the same with my uh, door barricades. My door barricades, I think, are less than uh, 4,000 vertices. It's, it's actually really, really low um, in total. Yeah. Thank you, Craig. Okay, so what we do now is we're going to go to our container buildable content models proxies here and we are going to essentially say um we're actually going to copy this and paste this in and we're going to do that to our uh window two right and what we're going to do is we're going to change this to equal uh what we want it to be which is d left wall uh left window okay and then we're going to do that for this one cool so let's go ahead and do the left window okay. object builder all right cool so now what we can do is we can technically grab this and call this uh delete delete me when done uh, awesome. All right, and then we can go to our here, and we can go new, and when we can go here, we can go import FBX uh, proxies, and then we are doing the uh, the left wall one. Okay, so left wall, ba ba ba, import, awesome, cool, and then all we have to do here is go to our container buildable content data. Dupe. Data. Oh, huh. stupid me. Wrong thing. Name is available. Content. Container models. Data. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Whatever. I know what to do. It's easy to do this. Sorry. All right, then we just go um, Control X, boom, and boom. And now we have ourselves our left window here. Okay. So this is actually now a D, not a F. All right. So now what I can do is I can push E, uh, e on this guy. 
and then just copy this. E, and then boom, apply, okay. Copy, boom, E, boom, apply. And then uh, vertices, there we go. All right, so there we go. Okay, so I am noticing a little bit of a problem here, but that's okay. That's actually quite easy to fix. We just go to our uh, side view here and go left window, X, and go. We need to get real close. Yeah, like that. And then when we select it all again, boom, shakalaka. Almost hard to see. Okay. And then we can go delete, delete, save, and then we just have to fix our geometries. Which, again, is going to be very, very easy to fix. Uh, we don't have to do much. So let's go ahead and push O for the object select. Uh, we're going to do that. Push the V again. Select those. Go over here. Make it the width of the thing. Now, this is going to be openable and closable. So because this is going to be openable and closable, we have to make sure that we make sure that it is tight to the window uh itself as possible because we don't want um our um geometry to be bigger up uh, to be too big to the rest of our uh thing um i know that was like super like you know not super formal talk but you i think you guys get what i meant um we want to make sure that our geometry doesn't is not bigger than what the model technically shows and we do this mainly because what it's not going to cause a lot of issues geometries don't have problems intersecting with each other because geometry conflicting with geometry doesn't cause uh weapon damage unless you're an entity right so i guess it technically could be problematic hey always streams how you doing, buddy? How you doing? There we go. That looks like as good and pretty as I'm going to get her. All right. Now, for all of you guys who use Object Builder, I'm going to show you a trick. So, normally you would select this and you would cl click New, Component, or One. Don't worry about doing that. Don't worry about doing that at all. All you have to do is go to Structure, Topology, Find Components, and click that. And it auto-generates the component for you. And if I had 6, 12, 13, uh, it goes up to like 99 components, by the way. It doesn't go up. Um, it can go higher, but just be aware of its limitations. Uh, so now I have a component here. And like I've said in the past, everything that you want geometry-wise to actually have a true geometry has to have more than 20 mass. Uh, that is actually an Arma thing that said... Um, it's, I could not find any other documentation on it, but that is what it is. All right. So here we go. Let's go ahead and make sure we have no other, like, problems out, out around there. Okay. So then we can just copy this, and we can go to our other geometries here and deal with this. Okay, there we go. Boom. And then delete these. Boom. And voila, we now have ourselves the window. Now, this is just a proxy, by the way. We're going to have to do the rest of it here in just a moment. So 
Don't get too, too excited. go we're gonna call this the delete uh me again all right save and then in our untitled thing here we're going to uh just control z it and then go to our import fbx and then go to here and we're going to do our right window blah 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 If you guys don't know who um, <clears throat> Always Streams is, uh, he is a guy who makes um, informational tips and tutorials and stuff. Uh, fun little videos on his uh, channel about DayZ and things that you should know or things that can help you benefit you. Uh, he was recently on the DayZ podcast. Uh, like Darkwing just congratulated him on being a very nice person overall. Um you know, sometimes he talks a bit funny, but I think that's because he broke his own jaw. Uh, don't worry, folks. If I didn't like him, I wouldn't tease him. All right. All right, let's go ahead and double check that this looks okay. Hopefully everybody is enjoying themselves and having a fun time. Don't forget, you have a spotlight up too. Well worth the watch. Ah, uh, hey now, I'm, I'm a nobody. I'm a nobody. You don't want to watch me, guys. I know I say that, and you're in here watching me, so it got, <laughs> whatever. Oh. Oh, man. I'm sorry, Darkwing. I'm sorry. Is Mark still in here? Marks, are you still here? He probably doesn't want to watch me do all this boring crap anyway. Just about. <laughs> so have you had any more epiphany ideas for this or what? Huh? 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 Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. Wow. I don't think I've ever sounded more annoying in my life. And if I have, please don't tell me. I have a very sensitive soul. that looks good i would suggest a stair and a walkway to the outside of the container uh i will tell you that i would not want to do that uh mainly because part of the beauty of this mod is uh that sounds good to me marks I would say having anything on the outside of the container, in my opinion, ruins uh, the overall uh, possibilities of uh, future camouflages. Um, now, it's obviously people's choice to do that, but when you give someone an option to do something, nine times out of ten, they're probably going to eventually use it um, or whatever. And then they're going to complain that, oh, the containers weren't as camouflagey as they said they you said they were or whatever. I don't know. But, I mean, it's it's something, actually, you know what, I probably w should consider. And like Mark said, once we get into beta, um, can you make a deployable function of various pre-made versions that admins can use? I mean, admins can just build their own. They have all the things. I could build it in a matter of seconds. <laughs> Turn. 
Um, I can actually show you how fast I could build a container using admin tools. Oh, wait, did I, uh, did I check the uh, mass on this? Yes, I did. Cool. But I'm not opposed to the idea. I'm not saying no, I'm just saying I'm not sure how beneficial it would really be to um, thing because it would be quite a bit more work to make everything pre-spawn and be pre-built because it's modular. So like then the admins would have to tear down things and rebuild them anyway. So it'd be just easier for them to build it up using admin tools and build it how they want to. But maybe, maybe. All right, cool. So now that we have all of those done or both of those done, what we can do here, folks, is no, I don't want to save is we can open up our uh, core. So the core here is what it is. Now, if you guys are interested in how base building works, if you pay attention when I do the windows and ask questions, I will explain it to you and I'll try my best to explain as I'm doing it. So if you look down here, you can see um, that I have a... Uh, why do admins need bases anyway? <laughs> uh, you know, maybe they want to build like a cool like container city or something. Who knows? Um, or maybe they're all like, welcome to my server. There is no such things as bases. But if you wish to buy a pre-safe um, safe zone uh, container, you can for the low price of only 1200 in-game rubles that'd be pretty cool right sir there's so many different kinds of servers out there that you know what i would not be surprised if someone made these like a container city on the port of shinaris or something who knows all right um so what i have here folks is i have gone through and every single one of my selections is through a, a letter of the alphabet now, the reason why I have done this is because what it does is it allows me to organize everything as I wish it to be. So, my left walls are the letter D. If my, my, and my right walls are the letter F. So, when I add more things to a certain area, all I do is use the de de designation F to add more things. So, what we have to do now is we have to work off base building proxies. So, proxies are just a symbol of a adding in a call for a object or a model into another model. Pretty easy stuff. So, all I do is I go up here. I go create proxy. I go to browse. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my proxies here. Now, make sure you're inside your P drive when you do this. And I'm going to do the D underscore left window first. So, I'm going to double click this. And then when I click this, it's going to add my proxy in. You can see that I have my proxy down here. You can see that I have selected three points. That's what proxies have. Proxies only have three points, and they only have one face. Then what that, when that is done, all I do is I go to my selection area. I right-click. I go to New. And because it's D, I go D, lowercase d, by the way, underscore, left, left, underscore, window. And when I push enter, now I have a D left underscore uh, window. Now, here's the problem, though. I literally just lost my proxy. When I click on the D left score window, it's right there. But why is it so high? Well, that is a problem because that is my fault. So now let's go ahead and try this again because I messed up on that. So proxy, browse. Oh, you know what it is? Uh, it's the uh, it's that hammer thing. I moved where it's going to spawn. So let's go ahead and close this down. Uh, I think we don't. Oh, we can save it. It's fine. So let's go ahead and reboot it back up. So because I moved the cursor and I don't understand how that cursor system fully worked yet, I just have to restart this. So we go to again. Proxy, browse, we go to our D left window proxy. Again, make sure you're in the P drive. Double click that and you click OK. And now we have the selected three points. It's in the very center. That's exactly where we want it. Because when you put a proxy in, 
the proxy's placement inside the model where you put the uh, vertices inside of that proxy is going to remain true. So then all I have to do is I have to go here, new, again, we're going to go D underscore left underscore window. And voila, we now have our D underscore left window. Now, if I were to jump here and jump back, you can see that it's now in my D areas. Okay. Now, what I have to do, because technically I have a selection, I have to make sure that my geometry also has that same selection. So now what we do is we go here and we pretty much pr repeat the process again. Do not copy and paste your selections in base building. I have had so many problems with that. For some reason, it does not like that happening. You have to do this manually. If anybody can explain it to me, that'd be awesome. However, every time I copy and paste from my 0, 0.00 or duplicate my 0, 0, 0, uh, my zero, zero resolution and then, re um, and then change it to a geometry, it always, always Fs up. It always Fs up. So that's why I suggest don't worry about trying to do the thing. The good thing is, is once you have set a uh, selection in the zero resolution, you can just use that selection. You don't have to type it back out. It's already, it's kind of like when you're using Notepad Plus or Visual Studio. If that name already exists, you can just re uh, push enter on it once you see it. And there it is. Now we have to give the proxy a mass. So then we go 20 up here. Again, remember, a pro, um, a Anything inside of the geometry has to have a mass. If you ever have a model and sometimes there's a mass, sometimes there's a not, or let's say in game you have to throw the item for it to actually eventually take on a mass or take on a collision with the player, that is simply because the object does not typically have a mass until the in game engine assigns one to it. If you give it a mass up here, before you build, um, when you build the model in the P, um, in the P3D add-on binizer and stuff, it will automatically, upon being read by the game, give it a mass. So that's just something you should be aware of. So let me just click apply, and now our proxy have, has a mass. And now inside of our view geometry, we have um, this. Now we don't have a fire geometry, okay? But it pretty much is the same exact thing. So we go here, we go left, left wall window. There you go, it's selected. Okay. Memory, land contact. Okay, cool. Now here's the fun thing if you guys don't know how to do this. And what you can do is you can take your uh, you can go to your memory because all uh, all animations work off of the XYZ axis and if they don't they work off of two points we are going to make ourselves a rotations uh, point a rotation thing for our axis so what we're going to do here is we're going to go to our create the proxy and this is a trick that I just want to show you guys how to do. And then what you can do, once you do the proxy in there, you can go show proxy objects. And now we have ourselves a shown of the proxy objects. What it's doing right here is it's showing us what the proxy looks like. It's not extracting the proxy. It just shows us what the proxy looks like. So now I can't, I can't select any vertices in it, but I can, if I select the proxy, move it around if I wish to. This is helpful when you're doing base building inside of the resolution, as you could technically go, oh, hey, you know what? I don't think I placed that proxy right. So I can select all my proxies here and be all like, what does it look like now? Okay, that looks cool. Okay, cool. Well, I know all my proxies are placed well. So now I can go back to my high proxies and voila, I'm back to my three points and it makes it um, back to normal. So in this situation, again, we want to... Uh, go to our memory here and we're going to make ourselves an axis now uh, I like to use two points for my axes you don't have to 
So if I were to click on my right door axis, you can see it right there. If I click on my left, uh, left door axis, you can see it right there, right? Now there are going to be back door axes. Hello, is this the science called game design, 3 design or what? Thank you for all you do. Uh, no, no, no. It's just, uh, I'm just working on Daisy, uh, a Daisy mod that I'm, uh, putting out soon and that Marks came up with. Uh, but right now I'm just explaining to some people in here, um, some of the base building stuff. So now that I got these, let's go ahead and put in our axes that we want. So I want this to go right there. So I'm going to zoom in right on this, right? So we can technically go all the way up here if we wanted to and we could put push insert now insert creates a dot and then we can go over here and we can move this perfectly in the center of this right so right there but however what i want to do is i want this to actually tilt um yeah right in the center right there all right and then finally what we can do uh is we can then go there and then we can push Y here. If you hold shift going up, you can actually put this on the same axis as the other one. And there we go. So now all I have to do is go here and select this bad boy and go here. And we're going to call this the left when uh what left so you want to use lowercase so left window axis all right there we go so now we have a left window axis and now we can go to our proxy here always make sure if you're going to delete a proxy you hide it first and then save because it will actually crash the object builder if you technically um if you technically delete the proxy without hiding it. So that's just a good thing for you to note. And then finally, uh, the one last thing we have to do here is we're going to open up Object Builder again. Um, and we're going to open up our left-hand window. And we're going to grab the geometry, uh, the view geometry here. So grab this, copy it, and then... What you do here is push X and then you can paste this. Now I like to do this. I like to make an empty one. I like to delete this. And then I like to then copy that, put this in here, paste that in, click save, right click on here, go here, go D and then go to the left wall, push enter. Oops. See that, no, that's a, that's a cool thing about object builder that wasn't there before. And before Object Builder, which is immediately assigned that selection to the other selections, now it tells you you have to select the selection you had before and a new selection, and then click Redefine if you wish to add it to that. So then we go D left window, and now the D left window is technically a viewable thing, which means it also means that we can op we can actually trigger it to be buildable or an animation. So now that we did that, we have to regenerate all of our components. Again, just like the fire geom um, the view geometry and the fire geometry, your view, um, your view geometry has to have components. If it doesn't have components, none of these selections, none of these names will actually matter. So now that you've done that, all we have to do is go structure again, topology, find components, and it will generate or attach a component to every single one of these guys. See, isn't that cool? So now all of these are real components that can be interacted with. So now that we've done that, we now have to go into our model.cfg. So if you haven't been following along, there are a lot of steps in building base building objects, which is why it takes so much time to do because you have to make the model, then you have to UV unwrap it, then you have to put it inside Object Builder. Um, um, yeah, Object Builder. Build the entire P3D. You have to have, uh, 
God knows how many pro uh, a proxy for each play uh, thing you want to build or not build. Um, so for me, uh, I have a total of 21 proxies so far. Um, so that is 21 model um, uh, P3D model creations I have to do with a core model. So that's 22. Um, and then I have to go through into my model.cfg and then we have to do more work. Thankfully, the work in the model.cfg isn't as tedious, but it's still there. So what we do here, we find here and then we push here and we go D, D underscore left underscore window, right? And then we put a comma here and then we put that. Now for here, we also want to do this as well. There we go. So to explain what's happening right here is this is the new creation and then this is the parent. So whenever you create one of these new selections, if I were to go D left window and I were to say, uh, this is also D underscore left window, then this D left window is the child of my D left wall. Now my E back door is not a, a child, um, the, uh, the left wall and the left window isn't a child of the, the back door. There can only be one parent to one child when it comes to these selections. So that's just something to consider. That's why you see a lot of these things are um, as empty instead of being totally full. Um, it's because these are technically parents. And if I were to, um, this part would influence this part, but this part would influence this part. I don't know. Uh, think of it like, uh, if this part was a door, and um, then this part, the door, if the door was open, then the window would be triggered to open, if that makes sense. But like this, it doesn't get triggered by anything else happening. So that's just a good example of it. So then we have to put it inside of our skeleton, our container core skeleton, right? Then we go down here. And if anybody gets lost in this entire thing, it's okay. It really is fine. Um, I got lost a lot in this and it took me quite a few, uh, quite a bit of time to actually fully figure it out. So now inside of our CFG models class, the container core, which is what our P3D is called. I have told it that there is a selection called D underscore left window that tells the model.cfg. Not only is there a skeletal bone called D underscore left underscore window. There is also a selection tied to that bone that has the same name. So when someone looks at that selection in the view geometry and wants to build it, you should, um, you you could be able to build it up. And I will leave it public, uh, Darkwing Tight. I will leave it public. Then what you can do is you have to go into your animations. Now the animations where for the first one we're going to be creating is a hide animation. This allows us to hide the left window until we technically build it with a player or through tools. So what we have to do here is we're going to go down to our area here and I'm just actually going to copy and paste this. It's okay to copy and paste these as long as you change the stuff up. Now I will technically, all I have to do is uh, remove that. Now you'll notice that my class here is capitalized. It is very important that you remember this in the coming steps in just a second. I will explain this here in a minute. Then we have our type animation, which is a hide. This says that this part that's select, that is part of the selection is going to be hidden. Our source is a user. Now me and my friend Red Falcon are trying to discover 100% what all this controls. But my theory is the source user means that a user or a player interaction source has to trigger this to be built. It can be technically hidden and shown with other source uses. However, I do not know of many. Now, my friend Red Falcon, who makes helicopter mods, um, also knows more about this as well. But we are still talking about 100% what this means. But that is our conclusion so far. This is the technically outside force or the inside force that is part of the model that influences how this animation is triggered. Next up, we have our selection. Now... I'm actually going to go here and I'm going to delete the wall and leave this as a lower case. Then we have a source clamp address. That just means that it's a hard address. Don't worry about it. 
you have your main and your max value. Um, and then we have our hide value. Our hide value is technically the value in which it is hidden. And then our, um, and then, so at zero point, at zero point zero zero nine or zero point zero zero one, this animation is hidden. So it means the left wall is hidden. However, when you do the build action, it, it triggers the animation to reverse itself and the animation gets set to 0.00, .00 which shows the selection. You can technically use a show animation, but Daisy uses a hide animation because it wants to hide all of the buildable parts right away. So to answer a earlier question from Big Joe, if you wanted to, you could technically take a mod up. You could definitely technically duplicate a uh, P3D and then in the model.cfg, change the model.cfg to that new P3D and then change all these hides to shows and immediately when you place the thing, all of it would be built. Um, now, whether or not all of it would have proper geometry interactions and all that kind of stuff, I have no clue. But that is one way to visually make it look like it's all built. However, we have D underscore left window. That is the same selection we used in our model.cfg, is it not? Well, yes, you are correct. What this is saying is that the class D underscore left underscore window in capitals is a class and it is tied to our selection lowercase d underscore left underscore window so what happens um is it's saying that this class is controlling this selection which is c underscore left underscore window so when this class is triggered this selection follows suit. That's the differences. The reason why I like to follow Daisy's uh, situation is, um, example is they capitalize the selections for the class names. It just ties them both together. It says that this class controls this selection. So when you're going back and you're working on your mods, if you called your class, I don't know, um, window thingamajig, and your selection was called left window. Well, if someone looks at it and goes class thingamajig or class window thingamajig, what the hell does thingamajig do? Well, yeah, I don't get it. It's confusing to me. So this just makes it so it's cleaner for you in the future as well as for others who are looking to improve upon your mod or work with it. All right. So that is uh, the D left window. Now I'm going to go over to the config CVP and we're going to talk about the config CPP before we talk about adding in the animation rotation to it. I know it's there's been a lot of talking, there's been a lot of me going, blah, 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 but I hope over time, if you guys do watch this video again, it starts to sink in. So let's jump over to the config CPP. So in the config CPP, uh, we have our uh, all the way up, all the way up. I'll move it over so uh, you guys can see it fully and not. All right. So we have a thing called class animation sources. Now, the class animation sources in the config CVP is how you tell the config CVP to interact with the model.cfg. And then the model.cfg interacts with the model itself. So it's kind of like P3D talks to the model.cfg. The model.cfg talks to the config CVP and then vice versa or anywhere in between. That's kind of how it works, right? So they all three are important to base build. So in the config CPP, we have these class animations. We have our animation source hidden or shown, animation source hidden, animation rotate, and then we have our classes down here. Now, if you look at our classes, you can see we inherit off of these things. The inheritance is these two dots. If you don't know what an inheritance is, it's pretty much saying that I have a phone I want my phone settings to work on this new phone. Okay, cool. This new phone, I copied all these settings onto this new phone. Well, this setting, let's call it camera megapixels. I don't want just 12 megapixels. I want 24 megapixels. So now this new phone, while it has inherited everything from this phone, now has 24 megapixels instead of just 12. That's a pretty quick rundown of what inheritance does. 
Um, so here we have all of these deploy a frame bottom are all source hidden. Again, we have our selections hidden until we can build it. So in this example, what we're going to do is we're going to actually uh, make a class. And remember, this class is actually going to be the class we just created here, D underscore left underscore window, because that's how the config CPP reads it. So we can paste that in, put in our dots, and then we can go animation source hidden. And then I like to put my brackets down here. And voila, now the config CPP knows that the D underscore left underscore window is the controller of the model.cfg's class, and that class controls the selection of the lowercase d underscore left underscore window. Following so far, folks? If not, let me finish, and you can ask all the questions you want about this as we get closer to all of this testing. So now what I have to do is go to my con class construction, and we have to make the part buildable. So now what we we're going to do is we're going to go to our wall here and we're going to essentially copy this and we're going to create a new class just under it, right? And this is going to be called the D left underscore window. And we're actually going to change the name to that too. All right. And we're going to change this to, uh, let's go ahead and go all the way down real quick. So 16. So right now this is going to become 16. Now, the reason why you want your IDs to be different is because if the IDs on multiple classes match up, those parts will all build at one time. I found this out the hard way after spending probably about two weeks making it so my handforged nails could build a uh, vanilla and uh, uh, base building 2.0. I forget what it's called. Um, the other base building mod. Um, and I used the same IDs because I thought that's that's what you had to do. Well, when I went to test it, it caused a lot of issues and I was never able to deploy. Uh, it took less nails to build uh, with it. Because originally, we'll, we'll actually talk about that later. I don't want to get too, um, too off track. So now I have my D left window. And what we have here is the ID is 16, right? And we have the class. The class is called um, technically under um, lowercase. Now, the reason why this is lowercase is because the construction, the construction class actually interfaces with the model.cfg and the model p3d immediately. It act, um, the the class capital d underscore left underscore window is only for animation work. Um, so in the space building thing, it pulls directly from the model.cfg and the P3D itself. So if I were to have this be a capital D left window, it would cause errors or problems. Um, so that's just something to note, okay? Now the required parts is the amount of um, the other parts that have to be built before this part will be allowed to be built. So right here, I have a frame, which is the frame of the thing has to be built. However, this is a window. I don't want a window just floating in the air. So we're going to go D and we're going to say the left wall window also has to be built before the left window itself can be built. Following so far? Good. Then we have the conflicted parts. So we can see here that I have a D underscore left underscore wall. Well, that means that if the wall is built, I can't build the left window. That is totally expected and that is totally okay. And then we have the metal plate, and then we have the metal window. And that, folks, is every single step you need to do to make one part buildable in base building. I would say that it's an exciting and a fun thing to do, but after you do this probably about, I don't know, five or ten times, you lose patience for it. Which, if anybody's ever been curious why I am so slow to do my building fortification updates, this is why. This. Hmm. Alright. So, uh, let's go ahead and boot it up and see if we get any errors.
I feel like I just talked for like a good like 20 minutes. I don't know, anybody time that? Man, I talked way too long. Well, we didn't get any errors. That's good. All right. Just waiting to load it. Uh, Marks doesn't pay me at all. Uh, Marks had an idea, and he told me that he wanted me to... Uh, uh, I told him that I'd be okay with helping him. And he said, great, and this is kind of the journey we've gone on. I have actually had people ask me to make base building mods for them for them in the past, and they did not like my responses of how much it would cost. Um, mainly because I'm not cheap. <laughs> uh, it's probably why I don't have a lot of commissions under my belt, because I don't really scuff off my talents. All right, I really need to... Um, I really need to, uh, I need, really need to put that in the live times as well as, uh, make it so it doesn't, um, delete itself. Alright. Alright, so boom, boom, boom. And so, build. Left wall window. Aha! Look at that, guys. Boom, boom. Uh-oh. Everything on your end okay? I've only lost 0.1% of my frames. You guys okay? Okay. So here we go, guys. Look at that. So, D left wall window. Build. Nice. Okay, now what we need to do is we need to test it. So, metal, uh, metal plates. So, metal plates. And then we need nails. Metal plates. Right. Nails. Ah, uh, the... The uh, nails and the metal plates and stuff like that are all a, um... Eh. Uh, if you're gonna do something outside of your own passion, you're gonna make it worth it, worth it and rightfully uh, so. You are very skilled, uh, very skilled. Fun is a very different than work. Yeah, agreed. I didn't, I didn't realize uh, it came so close. Huh. Maybe I'll start to cough here in a minute. All right, uh, we need a hatchet. Uh, I'm going to be using the blowtorch uh, here in a minute. Uh, I'll be making it so the blowtorch builds, with, uh, builds instead. All right, All right wall, back, barricade. D left window. All right. Boom. Eh, maybe, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not too worried about it. If I don't make anything, I, I don't make anything. Um, you know. I will state, though, honestly. Um, and then what we want to do here is... Where is it? So we'll take that out. Take that out. Okay. 
All right, so I gotta I gotta go through and fix the dismantling because I don't think I can dismantle anything, can I? Let's go ahead and try uh, let's try this wall. Quick. Build a. That's what I want to build. There we go. Oh, there it is. Okay. So, where are you? Oh, okay. We'll, we'll figure it out. Okay, so what I want to do now is, yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. All right. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. I was going to do, uh, what was it? E back door. Yeah, I built that one. And then, what was it? Front door barricaded. Okay. So left side. Hey, ghost. Uh -huh, a whole different set of tools. Awesome idea. Front door. Left side. My front door. There we go. Build a front door. There we go. So now it only shows open and close. So I can open it. I can close the fucker. Awesome. Okay, now let's go ahead and uh, handle the rotation of the ship. How are you doing, ghost? All right, um, so let's go ahead and do our rotation. All right, <clears throat> so now we have to do a rotation. So the rotations are kind of interesting. So I have my rotations down here, and right now we only have two rotations, but we're going to make a third rotation. Now we don't technically need uh, to create a new selection inside of our Model P3D. All we do is have to make a new rot um, a new class. So what we're going to do here is we're going to copy this guy and copy and then we're going to push this enter there we go i'm doing okay just having fun showing everybody here uh how this stuff works so d oh d left wall window and then we're going to go to there and we're going to delete all that and we're going to call rotate now what we're going to do here is we're going to go to here and we're going to go back to our memory. It's a bit complicated, but you know, everybody, everybody can figure this kind of stuff out. So there you go. And now in here, we can put this as our axis. And then we can say our selection is D underscore left window. And voila, we now have ourselves that. So then we have to go back to our config CPP and go all the way up. All right, and what we want to do is inside the rotation, we want to go like this. All right, and we want to go uh, back to our model.cg, grab this, copy this, paste this here, and voila, we now have an animation rotation. Now what's cool is like, so this is 0 0.017 per like millisecond, right? And this is a value of 0 to 100. So what I want to do is I want to go 0 here. And we're going to change this to 10. Okay. 
Now, if I did this right, what I should be able to do is I should be able to go into my resolution LOD, push F12, and I should be able to see whether or not I actually did this properly. Now, uh, what I will say is that this can become a little bit confusing when you first start working with triggering animation sources, but have faith, you'll, um, it's not too, too complicated. So what we want to do here is we want to go to 23. Okay, so there is the thing that we have going on here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to zero and we're going to start hiding everything. Ah. All right, we're going to restart that. Give me a second. And also, I realized what I did wrong. So in the model of CFG, I was telling it to rotate a wall, not the window. All right. Ah. Okay. So let me go ahead and explain this to you. So when I push page up, if you look in the upper left-handish corner, you'll see user 0, user 1, user 2, user 3, right? Now, if I go and look at my model.cfg, you can see I have the source user. Every time, so user 0 is technically my deployed, and user 23 is my D left rotate. Now, you can, and I have had mixed results with this, technically call this uh, window rotate. Um, but again, like I've said, I've had mixed results with this. Sometimes it allows me to work. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, I would suggest if it does work for you, change it back to, uh, so here we go. So we have our window rotate. Voila, there we go. So what I, I want to do now is, uh, we're going to hide that. We're going to hide, uh, we're going to hide the front of uh, that. Okay, so there we go. So now if I go to this one, you can see now I did this properly. So now my window is rotating. Now what I kind of want to do is I want to adjust where my ro window rotates, right? So what we're going to do here is... Um, actually, I might just model um, straps or something there. I'm not sure. What do you guys think? Should I think I should model straps or you think I should just leave it as it is? Eh, we'll have to see. So now it's only moving 180 degrees. So what we want to do here is we actually want to go to... Um, Should need to install hinges okay so uh let me go ahead and pull something up real quick we drive example cfgs translation oh not there rotation how did i do this uh rad okay there we go so what i want to do here is i actually want to go to uh rad um i think it's i think it's uh 360 uh yeah you know, like 340 or something let's go ahead and find out
page down. Oh, page up. <laughs> Oops, don't want to, don't want to pin that. Oh, oh, folks, if you are doing base building uh, stuff, the model config editor is your friend. It verifies that your model is working as you said it should, and it is so, so nice. It actually tells you what classes are assigned to your selection, which is really nice. Uh, I always suggest doing that. It's just in tools, model, config editor. It's just, it's just a nice thing. Nice. Now I was thinking about making it go to like about there. So what would you say that is? Like 140? Like 140? If you ever, when you uh, change values on your configs and stuff, on model config, you have to refresh your bulldozer. Okay, maybe a little bit less. Maybe, uh, maybe like 120. Uh, RADS converts uh, the radians or vectors into a manageable number for you, by the way. Instead of doing this, uh, you could do radians and stuff. Did I save that? Yes. All right. And this is kind of where the nitty-gritty stuff comes into play. Uh, you know. Just kind of have to sit here and sometimes fiddle around with things. I think that's actually pretty good. Uh, let's go ahead and... Uh, there we go. Yeah, let me uh, let me adjust where the where the rotation thing is. So memory, and then uh, we'll put the proxy back in there so we can like better judge it. Left window, click OK. View, show proxies. Left window, access. Let's see how that looks. Oh, I didn't save it. Shit. There we 
we go. Redefine, just to double check. Oh, well, that's that's no fun. Oops, I just uh, didn't follow my own rule there. <laughs> Always make sure you hide it before you delete it. That could have been bad. That could have been bad. <clears throat> All right, let's go ahead and look at what uh, which one the wall is. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. There we go. So anyway, sort out a uh, for a ho hope to time frame where it may be a vote for Buck Rogers that life and work comes first, so there is no solid estimate and change in time. Are you trying to ask of, of when the mod's going to be public? <laughs> that confused the hell out of me. <laughs> uh. You know that looks that looks that looks a, a lot better. Um, yeah. It could be further out. It could be a little bit further out, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and go to our memory or our view geometry, and then. Uh, I, I, I want I want to knock it out probably before uh, the end of next month. Uh, so I'm hoping probably the next two to three weeks I can get this out. Is more or less what I want to do. I mean, a lot of the work is just kind of fine-tuning now. Yeah, I might do metal hinges for aesthetics. Again, I'm working with Marks on this, so I have to make sure Marks also is happy with possible uh, ideas and changes. Um, but yeah. Now what I'm doing, folks, is I am creating what is called a interaction square. Uh, and what this does is it pretty much says that when somebody interacts with this, um, it should, in theory, um, allow people to trigger the opening and closing of the window. Hence why it's called the interaction square. Um, hey Dump, hope you're well, uh, sir. Can't wait for the one um this one brother seeing it on Mark's channel. Awesome stuff. Just curious, can we break down regular containers for scrap base towards space containers? That'd be cool. I imagine very complicated for grass messes. So the only way I know how to remove static objects in the game, or to make it so static objects in the game uh has no future functionality, is either through in its uh, being attached to the object, much like I did with the fuel mod from New Dawn. And the only way I know how to delete objects is how Daisy Editor does it. But I don't know how to script that myself. So it's kind of more of a, you can build this yourself. And it's more of a, 
you're creating the illusion of a, a container. And don't don't get me wrong, it's going to be tough. It's going to be strong. It's just more of a you saw the containers and your survivor was all like, "There's a lot of bandits in this world, and those containers are pretty hard to get into." I bet nobody would fuck with um try to break into my base if I made one of those. You know, and you know, that was kind of the whole concept about it, is that you could put these near other containers, like on the Shinaris, Electro, Sovet, Moyarsk docks, or other places that have a bunch of these, and you can like kind of like camouflage your bases. Now, I fully expect people to do way more with this, but that's kind of more of the idea. So like breaking down other containers and other stuff like that, it's possible, it's just not within my scope right now on these kind of situations, if that makes sense. Plus, you know, this is Marx's mod, so I want Marx to be happy with it. Um, I'm pretty sure you guys are all fully knowledgeable about the work I've done in my own mods, and you know how complicated and how, like, super complex and loving I can be with stuff, but yes. Um, so, I want to keep in mind Marx's vision for this, and less of my own is more or less what I'm trying to say. He's been very open-minded with me, though. He's been talking to me constantly about it and, you know, listening to what I have to say. But again, like I've said, this is Mark's mod. I want to make sure Marx is happy with it. All right. So now we've done all of this. We have we have the hide and show. We have the rotation down. We have uh, the interaction ready. Now we have to go to our scripts and we have to make this possible for it to rotate. Uh, it's crazy, right? This is all so crazy. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go to our um, so we're pretty much gonna do like a open and a closed fence situation here, right? So I'll explain it here in a quick second. override void and then we're going to actually call this um, our own void and we're going to call this op open window right now we're going to have to actually technically do this for our um for our back as well I need to defrag my brain storage full. Um, you know what? Actually, I think uh, Darkly Tate, Tate has a very good point here, folks. So I think what we're going to do here is we're not going to go anywhere. I'm not, I'm not stopping streaming, by the way. But we are going to take a five-minute break. So I can go downstairs. I can grab something quick to shove, shove in my mouth. Maybe maybe some, some drink. And I will be back. Make sure you go potty, whatever else. I really appreciate you being here, and I hope to see you guys when I come back. If not, I appreciate you guys were here. But yeah, I'm going to be back in probably about like five minutes, I believe. Um, and when I come back, we will continue to work on all of this awesome stuff, okay?
folks, and we are back. Back, 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 back. Hope I wasn't gone too long, and I hope you guys didn't run too away, too far away on me. <laughs> Alright, so we got a closed window here. What we want to do is we want to go back up here. What we want to do here is we want to go to our gate approximate time, which is up here. And uh, we're going to put this here, the very top. And we're going to call this the window. Window approximate rotate time. And we're going to uppercase this. And we're going to change this actually down to like 500 milliseconds. <laughs> All right. We're going to change this to this. And this to this. All right. And then inside of our model.cfg, we're going to go and grab our D left wall rotate. And here, technically, all we need to do is only put one of these uh, for right now. We'll add more later, but right now we're going to. Uh, just do that. And then, uh, so we're going to be doing, we have to do quite a few stages here. Um, now don't get too, um, disheartened by this. We just have to make sure that, um, we essentially set up our stuff to be used. Avoid is stay opened uh, is we're gonna go uh, that uh, set window state yes obviously we want to make sure that um, this also has some of the other things we need. So, like that, we have to go down here. Bailey, sorry, sorry, girl, I'm sorry. I know you want to cuddle, but unfortunately, I am busy. <laughs> Probably going to be mad at me now. That's okay. Sorry about this, guys. The ride pool is opened. Okay, here we go. Is window opened? M, M underscore. here copy this is where some of the more or less nitty-gritty stuff stuff starts to come in and if it is boring i do apologize but it does need to be done 
Um, No. Oh, I know. I know. Yep. The group. Um. All right, our score is going to open a client, and click on M is open client equal is window opened, semicolon. Oh, sometimes uh, coding can be, uh, Coding is like, honestly, one of my least favorite things to do. Like, no joke. Like, I, I, know, I know its uses, and I know it's important, but man, it can really take a lot out of you. Even though you're not doing much. That's the only thing that's fun to me is the end. The end of what? Retexturing? Oh, you like the retexturing? Ah, yeah, I can see that. I can see that. Hey, mice, how you doing? How are you doing? All right. Defense, close fence, open window. With my rotation value on this, 120. That open state, all right. That mm. ah, ah, that window to open states, okay, true. I think that's all I need. <clears throat> yeah, I'm doing uh, building uh, bad mice. I'm doing building. At least I'm trying to. Wait, this is in Minecraft? Ha! Cool, I need to learn this. That's funny shit. 
do like Minecraft. I will be playing some Space Engineers later with my buddy uh, Yarl and them. All right. <clears throat> All right, so now we are in the part where um, we need to start to do this. I got so many build, uh, many building to do for my map. Uh, nice. So now what we need to do is we're gonna go to our uh, window left to interact. Ha! <laughs> Well, so there, and then there. It's fence. Close window. Oh, let's go ahead and actually uh, uh, mark all. Close fence. And close fence, okay. So here we need to go uh, and close. So we need to do these two as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say can open window and close window. We're gonna get rid of the hinges check because we don't care about the hinges in this situation. And we're going to change this to uh, is or is window opened. And there you go. The, this can open window. We want it to be uh, can close window. Can close window. I think that's that. Now on this one, we need to figure out what I need to check here, so blah 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 we don't need hinges and then we need to check uh is opened uh building inspector uh in UK they are crazy Good thing I uh, looked at that. There we go. Is window opened? All right. Don't see anyone else, so I'll just paste that there. And then here we want to go uh, open window, right? Yeah. Open window. Boom. Boom. And open. Oh. All right. Um. Okay. So if an open fence 
window okay so then the blah 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 can open window can open window all right i think we're ready to test this if i did this right our window should be openable and closable Uh, if Maya supports the Arma tools, yeah. Um, I don't use the Arma tools, uh, myself. Uh, I know my friend Lad does, but I just build them myself, and then I build my LODs myself. But, uh, yeah, unfortunately, I've never been shown how to use them, and I'm kind of stuck in my old ways. For lack of a better word. Alright, there we go. Function is window is marked as override, but there is no function with this in the class. Okay, that's correct. And is window open? Okay. It'll pop up in a second and I can fix it. So, 123. 123. I forgot to do something too, folks. That's my bad. All right, so that's done. I also forgot to register my new actions. So I go here, action constructor, and then I just got to register my actions. Oops. Probably why I didn't get any errors. There's kind of a joke we have in, uh, um, and uh in some of the modding world is uh if my mod boots up after doing that much work uh with um yeah. uh with no errors there's something wrong all right can't open window. 359. Thank you. 359. Ah, uh, yeah. There we go. Both of these can got, gotta go. Art. Did it just say multiple decorations? It did, didn't it? Uh, what are the multiple decorations? Yeah, it's time to go to bed when that happens. Uh, I can't tell how many times I've put... <laughs> there we go. Alright, uh... Function, can open windows marked as override. Okay, abort. Uh, function, uh, function is marked as override. Okay, abort. Where's my duplications? Function, okay, abort. Uh, there was no oh yeah yeah oh just duplications of land mass uh, land house yeah all right let's go ahead and pack this bad boy and uh yeah let's try it again guys again if that beep beep whatever gets annoying let me know uh, container function 359. Okay, I already took care of that. Did I not let it build? Three fifty nine.
Oh, I forgot to save it. <laughs> sorry, guys. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Should really name it something, uh, so it's next, not next to the Daisy uninstall thing. All right, it's booting up. Now the question is, is uh, <clears throat> did I uh, do this right? Oh, hey, I received uh, two community awards on Steam. Let me see if they're for my mods. Nope, it's for Cannabis Plus. What about the other one? Oh, my ammo making got a reward. Uh, extra helpful. That was nice. Hmm. All right. So... Inside here. Okay, door open. Door close. Door open. Okay. Oh. Uh, I did change the uh, how fast the door opens and closes. Although, it seems like... Oh, I think I fucked up. Okay. So, win window... Yep, I fucked up. That's okay. That's okay. It's actually not that hard uh, to fix this. Um, so we go here. We redefine. We select this bad boy. Uh, right click. Redefine. So the door interact doesn't select anything, but that selects stuff. We can go back here. And we can actually select uh, this. And then go back to our memory. Paste that there because it's exactly the same thing. Um, sorry, not memory, uh, view, boom, and then right here, and then redefine. What we should do is we actually should do copy, and this is a fun trick if you guys don't know about this. Uh, you can go in here, you can select a color on a vertice, and then at the very, very end, uh, this 1.0 right next to, uh, CO, you can actually set this to, like, um a transparency right so when i restart this what will happen is that area where my wall my window interact is will actually be visible to me and i can know exactly where to look to trigger the window to open and close so hopefully i fixed it the door uh the door thing's in the right place um however i did just realize that i need to redo my um components again so let's go ahead and, and fix that because technically um those are components so let's go ahead find components there we go and let's go ahead and make sure that our thing here has the proper components so we just do weights and we can see that's component 01 and then we want to do our door interact to make sure that has one so yep there you go that's all we needed all right let's see if this worked Yeah, I definitely need to put like a 1A or something there because it's cl too close to my uninstall Daisy thing. Just like accidentally uninstall Daisy, then just put out a Twitter. I uninstalled Daisy on accident, guys. I'm too lazy to reinstall it. I'm done with modding. <laughs> uh, I wonder how many people would be uh, who would like give me crap about that.
Uh, yeah. My good friend, uh... Did I fix it? Yep. Alright, uh, it's a little bit too quick. I, I, I need to fix that. Go ahead and look at our open window thing. Ah, uh, maybe that's why. Can I pull your buddy AC Rasta map with these doors? Can I, can I catapult your buddy across the map with those doors? I know, right? Just like... Okay. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Just damn! Damn! A little bit too quick there, huh? Let's see what's going on here. A while ago, buddy. A while ago. And uh, check this out. So if the fence is a is isn't so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna simplify this real quick because i want to make sure that it actually is working um and then i can look through the 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 pro the conditions and stuff yeah i'm sorry if you didn't know michael i do apologize but i did leave a while ago
See if this works. Oh, did I pack it? I don't think I packed it. Let's try it again. There we go. Wow. I'm building at Modular Shaping Center right now in my Bay 4, my map. It's massive. Oh, that's really cool. That is really cool, man. Uh, Z Bad Mice, you will have to forgive me. Um, I'm still uh, learning a lot about the body community overall, even though I've been here for like three and a half years. Um, what, what map are you working on? UK map. Nice. Ah, uh, lock stay, huh? No, that's a protection string. If the selection is I, target kick component main list, kick opponent. Okay, okay, if... Get component index. Target. I can link my YouTube. Uh, it's a UK map, all custom. Yeah, feel free. I don't think I have any bots that will stop you. If they do, I'll just pay. Uh, I'll just allow it. Um. <clears throat> well, time for prints. Yeah, I'm no map maker, but be happy to tell you about how your models and textures and stuff look. 
I know it's not Daisy related, but have you seen the trailer for Skyblade? A group of modders reporting over the Oblivion game to the Skyrim engine. It's a pretty impressive undertaking. That is awesome, Michael. I have seen the photos and have been following them for quite a while. I watched the trailer they released, um, letting everyone know in 2025 it will be fully out. i am also been waiting for them to finish Sky... Uh, it's like Morrowind, just Sky, Morrowind and Skyrim. And they've made great strides in that as well. So I'm excited for both. I'm more excited for the Morrowind version because I'm a Morrowind fanboy, but I love them both. I just love the freedom Morrowind gave you. Yeah, there was a lot of uh, reading, and yeah, sometimes having to travel around the map kind of sucked. But man, oh man, what it, was its freedom amazing. Why the fuck can't I open this? This is me off. You know what? I'm curious. That's a good idea. All right. Let's check out those print statements. I know why. I didn't add it as an action. I can't trigger something if it doesn't know that it's supposed to be attached to the object. Let's see if this fixes my issue. Derp, 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 derp. See, folks, even seasoned assholes like me do stupid shit like that. Let's see if that fixes it. It's only logical.
Sometimes it's tough, guys. Sometimes it's tough. Now we go here and we're going to X this out forward slash that action core Wait, you mean I have to sign my build before I publish the mod? I thought you publish then sign then publish it again. <laughs> Good old humor there. Good old humor. Oh, it might also help if I uh, made a uh, a window interact too. Like I had to touch for the server for not to spawn them. I leave the area to log. You guys are too, too funny. What do you mean you can't help me? I only have 83 mods on my server. You, Why can't you figure out what mod your mod is clashing with? That's my favorite one. It's like, what? what? Huh? You did what? Or, or or one of the newest ones I had was some person was trying to tell me that my config values for um my building fortifications mod weren't working at all and the mo uh, and the health of the door was staying the same. And I'm all like, "Okay." And I'm like, what mod are you using? They're like expansion. I'm all like, doesn't expansion have its own config for its like satchel charges and stuff? And they come back to me. And they're all like, after they gave me quite a bit of crap about it, they're like, oh yeah, the satchel charges say how much of the door it blows up or not, and it was like 50 times the normal vanilla damage. I'm just like, that's why.
Thank you, Johnny. Thank you. Right now, I'm just trying to figure out what's going on here. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> yeah it's called the explosion test it's actually a real explosion um Uh, yeah, so, you know, it's whenever I'm really mad, I actually, like, could do some, like, funny-ass stuff, like, um, you can go like this, and, uh, push Y, and then you go, like, uh, object builder, explosion... You can actually program it to a hockey if you want. All right, guys, I want to I want to go for a round for a second uh, because I actually need to um, think. So. I need to think about this for a second. So, if I am doing it, and you guys ever actually look at these things?
like zooming in really close. I think that was all that at some point. That's it, right there. Round chicken run! Ah, <laughs> uh, sorry. I'm just trying to rack my brain for what is causing the issue. I'm a little bit frustrated trying to figure out how to do some stuff. The trucks are the funnest. thing like I could tell you my FPS if you guys want. About 26. All right, um, I'm I'm done, I'm done goofing off. Um, I think I've come to a, cons a solution. Of course, Daisy stopped working. I told you to sh shut down, and you're all like, "Okay."
I am I am frustrated. Now let's look through the code here. On server start, container four equals fence, fence equals the cast action. Um, can open window, opens the window. You know what? Let's just go ahead and do a test here real quick. Um, so open window. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go copy and we're going to go into our um, our container core here. And we're just going to trigger it. Okay. And this will show if it's a problem with um, the coding inside the container core or inside my action itself. Muscles hurt. Ugh. I haven't asked you in a hot minute, Johnny, but how's how goes the uh, learning? Uh, I thought you were learning how to do something in Unreal. The carnage. Uh, see? It's not triggering. Maybe I put it in the wrong thing. No, it's not the right thing. Let's override bull is open do. Let's find out. Nothing. Is, is open over behavior mean? Okay. Uh, I am, yes, it's ongoing. Uh, Along in the process of reading items into the project, but between work, school, and family, it's a very long process. The stream has been live for. The stream has been live for offline. <laughs> uh... So, what we're going to do here is we're going to change this to a return true. Let's see if that happens.
All right. I think I broke it. <laughs> yeah, I broke it. Ah, I done fucked up. <laughs> oh, my God. Ah, there you go. That's why I can't do it. Okay. Okay. See, it's sometimes something so fucking simple um, that does it to me. Like, no joke. This override, which um, I'm now going to chase where it comes from, uh, it could be the, pro oh, it could be the cause of my problems. If I go here, and I remove this, put this here, you go back here and go open window. And this should be negative 120. All right, now let's go ahead and uh, fix my mistake here with my door rotate. Go back. Let's go to 50. All right, let's see if these changes do anything. I hate that. I look away while it's packing. I'm not sure if it packed or not. <laughs> uh. Oops, that's my bad. Also, I know it's probably a disgusting plug, but if you folks don't like, uh, you know, never mind.
All right. Let's go. If I only had to make one moving, uh, one openable and closable part on this, I'd probably be much, much further along by now. But I know Marx wants windows. And wants to have both uh, ends openable and closable. So uh, that's what I'm working on. Is once I can get both windows to open and close easily, and then the front and back to be openable, then I have to tackle being able to lock the front and back uh individually uh which i might have to reach out to a scripter to do that um somebody who's better at scripting than i am to do that that's better Because it changes, probably because it changes this into a door. Not really sure what's going on. Not really sure what's going on. Alright folks, it has been a wonderful, wonderful three and a half hours. And I'm going to call it here. We have done quite a bit of work. I think we have done quite a bit um, going on and have progressed quite a bit. So let's go ahead and end the stream. I will talk to you all wonderful people later. Uh, once again, thank you very much for joining me and coming here. However, um, I am very tired and I do want to, uh, you know, get further on this. So I might do another stream on this, but I think I'm going to try to figure out why I can't get the window to open and close next stream. So uh, next time I do this, I think uh, I'm going to probably be a little bit further along, but don't worry. Uh, it was fun spending time with you guys. Talk to you later.